Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time for tarot scopes. We're going to be doing the tarot scopes for the month of January 2024 for the sign of Leo. That's Leo Sun, Leo Moon, Leo Rising. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a general reading for Leo. Um, if you want uh, something uh, specific to you, you would need to have a, a personal reading. I do do personal readings. I do hour and hour and a half personal readings. If it's your first time, I prefer the hour and a half. It gives us a little more time to work. Um, it is a combination of astrology, numerology, and the tree of life, which is the Kabbalah. It's very unique. You've probably never had a reading like this before. And uh, it's very deep and potentially very transformational. And uh, if you're interested in something like that, there's a link below to my, uh, to uh, whether if, if you want a reading, you can just click on that link and you'll be given the options. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested in what's up for Leo for the year, I did do another video called Astrology Leo 2024. And uh, that one is, uh, it's about a half hour, I think. And it covers the whole year, the big shifts and changes and how that's going to affect Leo. So that's, a year-long general. This is a month-long general. And again, if you want something more specific, uh, it would be best to do a personal reading. So let's get started. Yes, Leo? All right. <clears throat> All right. So we are... Oof. Uh, Leo. So Leo, as you know, or you may not know, but you will know now, is a fixed fire sign. And uh, your mantra, Leo, is I will. That's why Leos get everything that they will. <laughs> your ruling planet, of course, is the sun. Now, because your ruling planet is the sun, where the sun sits um, in a month, where you well, where a lot of us put our energy, but especially Leo. Oops, I went the wrong way. Sorry, guys. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. Um, Mercury's retrograde, right? Is it retrograde yet? Yes, it went retrograde. <laughs> so, okay. So before we get to the month, I just want to mention something specific. Um, this is a very important year for Leo because the yearly vibration is an eight. And... In the tarot, the eight is associated with the strength card, and the strength card is associated with the sign of Leo. Now, on the tree of life, Leo sits on the path between the sephirot, and those are the emanations. Uh, one is the constructing and building sephirot, ruled by Jupiter, and the other one is the breaking down and cutting away the extraneous that's ruled by Mars. So that the Sephiroth are on either end of the path that creates um, the path of Leo or the path of the strength card. It is in the throat chakra, which for, for you Leo is probably no shock to you there because Leo is the sign of creative self-expression and you need to use your throat and your vibrations through over your vocal cords. Um, to be able to express yourself, yes? Okay. Now, where Leo sits in a chart is gonna be um, highlighted for everybody. And you as a Leo, uh, we're talking about you as a Leo, your your first house, your I am house, okay? And so this, uh, this can be a very exciting time. The eight is, as you so, so shall you reap of the seeds that have been over the last seven years. This particular period of time began in 2017 when we were in a 10-1 year. And now we're in the eight, eight years later in the eight year. And that's the energy of 2020, 24, excuse me. Mm. Talk about the chakra. My husband was, was cooking. Um, uh, he was making chili and he likes to somehow gets up to where I'm working and it chokes me. So I may need to 
drink a lot of water, you might, I might have to clear my throat. So you don't really need to know that, but I just letting you know, that's why I'm clearing my throat. So let's take a look at the, at the whole, at the, at the, the beginning of um, the year. Let's look at January. Now, because you're ruled by the sun, where the sun is, is, is significant for the Leo. And we start the month in your house of health and well-being. Uh, it's in Capricorn until the 20th, and then it moves into your house of relationship. So your, your energy goes to both your health, somebody who mentors a busy time for you. It's also the house of pets, so you might have a little bit more time with your animals, with your pet, with mundane, everyday tasks. It's a Virgo house, really. And so it's a great time to um, <clears throat> go through your stuff, right? And see what's of use and what's not of use. Let me go of what's not of use, making the instruments necessary so that your life can run a little bit smoother. And then one side goes into Aquarius, which is happening on the 20th of, um, of January. Then your focus for Leo is on relationships and on with relationship. <clears throat> I heard something outside my door. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with the first week, right? Well, the first week, the first day, incidentally vibrates one, which is the Wheel of Fortune. So that's nice because we certainly could use a little bit of a change of fortune, I think. Um, <clears throat> Mercury stations direct. So it start, the first couple of hours uh, of 2020, or uh, Mercury is retrograde, but it does station direct later in the day at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. Now for you, that is your house of fun. So perhaps you'll uh, have some more fun, right? <laughs> on that first on that first day. Um, and it is moving forward, but it does take pretty much the rest of the month uh, to get out of its shadow. So things will start to move forward, but you do have to be patient with that. So you might have to delay your fun just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Eventually, it does move into Capricorn, and that's going to happen on the 6th. Let me see, where is it? The 13th, Mercury goes back into Capricorn. And I say back because it was retrograde. It had been in Capricorn, went up to about 8 degrees, and then retrograded back into Sagittarius at the end of the year, and that's where we start <clears throat> stationing direct in Sag. Um, once Mercury goes into that sixth house, all those sixth house issues come up. Now, there's a lot of energy in the sixth house uh, at this time of the year for you, Leo. So really, this is an important time. You know, a lot of people have these um, um, New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. I'm going to care my health. I'm going to do exercise. I'm going to do that. And most people sort of let it go by the wayside. But for you, Leo, it's actually a good time to institute that kind of stuff. You, you you have, and you are a fixed sign and you are determined. So if you make up your mind to do it and you want to do it, it has to be something you love, you'll do it. So if you want to improve your health and the functioning of your life, January is the time to do it for you. Okay. <clears throat> On the third, we have Mars moving into Capricorn. So Mars moves into that house of health. Now Mars can be somewhat inflammatory, so you do have to watch yourself. Uh, your sixth house um, with Leo rising, the sixth house is in Capricorn and Capricorn rules the bones and the skin and the knees. So watch your knees, watch your bones, watch your skin. You can have eruptions uh, because of Mars energy in there. Now, Mars really likes being in um, Capricorn. So it's, it's, it's a time when you have to be aware of your health, but it's also a time when you can get a lot of work done. And uh, we know how much we love to get the work done uh, with Leo. You like to just do it, get it done, and then you have your leisure time afterwards. On the second week, we have Mercury making a last quarter square to Neptune. That is the eighth. There can be some 
challenges there, some confusion um, with Mercury now in that sixth house. And um, let's see, Neptune in your in your uh, eighth house, Neptune in the eighth house. So let me see, is that right? Okay, Mer no, Mercury's not in Capricorn. Mercury's in the fifth house. So fifth house to eighth house, there can be some confusion about love and sex. You might misconstrue sex for love. Uh, so just be aware of that if if you're so inclined. Uh, <clears throat> on the ninth, we have a, a, a trine between the sun and Uranus. This is an opportunity. Now, the sun is your sign, is your, is your planet. So whenever the sun does anything, you're influenced perhaps even a little bit more. It opens us up to be able to change things. As a fixed fire sign or as a fixed sign in general, change is not something that comes easily to fixed signs. Although Leo, of all the fixed signs, <clears throat> uh, Leo changes probably the quickest because if you're not getting fed in a certain place, you are willing to go to the next place where you can be fed. <gasps> And what I mean by fed is to have your fire fed. You need Leos, as all uh, fire signs need to know where their fuel source is. Because without fuel, they get snuffed out. So they will have a tendency to go from fuel source to fuel source to fuel source. Okay. Excuse me. Ah. Uh, on the same day, we have Mars making a sextile to Saturn. Now, Mars is in Capricorn at this point, loves being in Capricorn, and it's making a sextile, which is mentally stimulating to the planet that rules uh, Capricorn. So this is a really nice connection, and it's a connection that allows us to move in a more progressive direction. There's a lot of energy this month about helping those who need help, okay? And so we're going to see a shift in that energy as the as the as the year begins, which I know all of us will be relieved about. On the 11th, we have a new moon in the sign of Capricorn. Now, because this is your house of health, it's at 21 degrees of Capricorn. Because this is your sign of health, um, <clears throat> and here it is over here. I should use my cursor, right? This would be a really good time to start a, a new health regime. Okay, a new health regime. On the 12th, we have Mars making a trine to Jupiter. Whenever you hear the word trine, know that there's a free flow of energy. Now, Jupiter can exaggerate things and Mars in Capricorn can overwork. So be careful that you don't do that. Um, and the trine goes from your sixth house of work to your 10th house of career. So I think you're gonna be quite busy in January. So because you remember, you do have a lot of energy in that sixth house. And part of the lesson of the sixth house is to take care of yourself. <clears throat> On the 13th, Mercury moves into Capricorn. I already spoke of that. Week three, we have the sun making a sextile to Neptune. When you hear sextile this month, they're all sextiles that stimulate progressive change in humanitarian endeavor. That's what makes me think that there's a better chance that people who need the help will get the help once the year turns and we move into January. Mercury also makes a waning sextile to Saturn. Um, <clears throat> and so Mercury is our mind, Saturn is structure. This is also good. So we we have the illumination that we need, see who needs to be helped. We have the voice to help. And then eventually we have Mars. 19th, Mercury makes into Jupiter. Now, Mercury and Jupiter have been in a trine since December, on and off, but pretty much relatively in orb with each other. And the reason for that is because we had a we had a trine between these two right before Mercury went retrograde. Mercury went retrograde, trined again with Mercury retrograde. And now the third time is a charm. We have the trine on the 19th. And this is really important because this happens right before. So we're bringing in a lot of the energy from December into January with the ending. It's a trine of sharing our knowledge. So information is going to come out for us to be able to make decisions. Okay, make decisions. Mercury is your logical brain and 
Jupiter is your intuitive brain and there's a, a nice flow with that. So you're getting intuitions and the intuitions are making sense with your logical mind. And so there's a nice flow between both sides of your brain. We have the sun make a conjunction to Pluto. Why is that significant? Because Pluto is at the last degree, the last moments in Capricorn. Now, <clears throat> Pluto does go back into Capricorn in September, September 3rd, and it's there until the 20th of November, just in time for the election in the United States. Um, <clears throat> it will be back in that degree of Capricorn. But the Sun-Pluto conjunction that happens <clears throat> on the 19th is the last time the Sun and Pluto will conjoin in Capricorn for 200 some 200 and something years, right? 220 years or something like that till the next time Pluto goes into Capricorn, which I know I'm not going to be sitting here talking to you about it, so... Maybe in a different lifetime, we'll all be together talking about it. Um, <clears throat> the sun does that, it moves into Aquarius. And then Pluto moves into Aquarius. So this is a big deal. This is when Pluto moves into Aquarius. Now, Pluto was in Aquarius last year from the end of um, the end of March to the beginning of July. I think July 2nd, it moved back out into <clears throat> Capricorn. And so... We had a little bit of a hint. Now we get a bigger hint. And then next year, that's it. 20 years, Pluto and Capricorn. So that's going to be quite a journey that hopefully we get to take together, right? So the 20th is a big day. It's also the year of the wood dragon. <laughs> so the, the uh, uh, actually, is it the wood dragon? No, it's not the year of the wood dragon yet. That's right. It has to be the new me, the other ones. But we are sort of moving in that direction of Aquarius. We have to wait for the new moon in Aquarius, which doesn't happen until February. <clears throat> okay, week four, we have Venus move into Capricorn. Interesting that Venus waited for Pluto to leave before Capricorn. Venus moving into your house of um, health. Excuse me, which is a nice energy to have there. Okay. Um, on the 25th, we have a full moon in Leo. This is again with that new moon in, in Capricorn. So something comes to fruition at the full moon. And that full moon is going to be right in your first house. So you can expect to be pretty emotional on that day. Your emotions will be right at the front on that day. So be aware. <laughs> Be aware. On the 27th, the sun makes a, a square to Jupiter. Now, usually squares are challenging. The biggest is feeling, um, being too big for your bridges, uh, exaggerating, um, being maybe too optimistic about something. So just try to hold that down. Now, it is the sun and you're a sun-led sign. So just be aware that you could especially after that full moon and then there's this this continued burst of 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 energy just pace yourself pace yourself um <clears throat> on the same day the 27th we have mercury conjunct mars at 17 degrees of capricorn it will be on the same page so this is actually a good, good time to start a project as well okay Week five, we have a little bit of a different energy. We have uh, on the 28th, we have Venus make a sextile to Saturn. Sextiles, progressive change. Venus, our value, Saturn, structure. We, we will be able to do something that's meaningful for us. On the same day, we have Mercury making a trine to Uranus. Now, as I said, Leo is fixed sign and not always easy to change stuff, but the, the trying to Uranus will help you do that. And on the same day, there's a lot of stuff happening on that day. Uh, we have Venus making a trying to Jupiter, the two benefics. It should be quite a lot of fun. So uh, I think that uh, the end of the, the end of the, the month is at the beginning of the month is a little bit more arduous, 
But when we get to the end of the month, when the sun and Pluto is in your house of relationship, and then we have this Venus trine Jupiter, uh, there's a little bit more room for some fun for you. And then the last thing that happens in January is that Mars makes a trine to Uranus. Now, when you have a trine, there's nothing getting in the way of the flow of energy. And Mars and Uranus, Mars is action, Uranus is change, but Uranus is also explosive. And depending on how well-adjusted somebody is to their Mars, uh, this can be a little bit of trouble, or it can be a great opportunity to really sort of let go and do what needs to be done. Okay. All right. That's the story. All right. Let us get out of this. And I'm going to use the Illuminati deck for Leo. I use this deck a lot for Leo because it's so pretty and royal. And that's what Leo likes. Pretty and royal. Pretty royal. Oops, excuse me. All right. So let's, oh, geez, 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 Louise. The other day, I got to tell you the story. What is going on with these cards? The other day, I picked up the cards to shuffle them. Shuffle them, got them all ready, plop on the floor, right? Jesus. My hands aren't working that well today. All right, here we go. <clears throat> One more shuffle. <clears throat> Man, those peppers did a job on me. I love peppers too. I can eat them. They don't do the same thing, but when they get in the air, it's like napalm. All right. We start with the devil. The question when we start with the devil is what are you chained to? What are you chained to? So there is something that you're chained to. Now, luckily we have all this energy of change coming up. Let's see the challenge. We have the hermit. There is a sense that you have that you are doing this all on your own, that um, you have to depend on yourself because there's nobody else to depend upon. There's always, but first of all, there's always spirit to depend upon. So that is, that's an illusion on your part, but that's the challenge. That's the challenge. You're chained to something and you don't feel like there's maybe anybody there to help you either disentangle yourself or help you with the burdens you carry. Let's see what's underneath it. It's an illusion. You're not alone. That's what these cards are saying. It's an illusion. You have to make a choice. See, this is the thing. You have to make a choice. And it's very difficult for you to make it right now. It's like nothing seems real. There's all these possibilities and uh, it's just, you're not even sure that what you're seeing is real, honestly. Let's see what's in the past. We have the emperor in the past. You're used to being in control. You're used to being the head of things. So this is a very difficult position for you to be in. Let's see what's in the sky. Uh, Spirit says you can do it. The strength card. Here's the strength card, the card of the of the year right there. This is about overcoming your lower nature. You're being tested to overcome your lower nature because the devil card is a choice card as well. Are you going to choose the lower or are you going to choose the higher, the higher road? Let's see what's in the immediate future. Uh so whatever it is that you were holding on to, uh, whatever it is you were you were struggling with uh, is coming to an end. This is the end of a cycle. I've picked, let's see, one, two, three, four, five cards and and um, 
one, two, three, four, five, six cards, and five of them have been major arcanas, which usually indicates that this is a significant time for you, Leo. How, how it looks from the outside, uh, that you have great potential. Great potential here. Let's see your domestic situation. Oh, three of cups, friendship, happiness, joy. This is really nice. Um, you you might uh, this might be a time when you get to hang out with your friends. Remember, towards the end of the month, there's a little bit more time for leisure, and there's a little bit more time for fun. And this indicates that that is very much the case. Hopes and fears. Um, this is not a hope. Nobody wants to be burdened. So, uh, you're or you're hoping that you can unburden yourself, perhaps. And the outcome. <clears throat> the Queen of Wands, yes, the Leo card. Wow, all the Leo cards came up. Um, you are the queen of your domain. That's it. You're the queen. You get to decide, right? You get to decide. You're in charge. I'm going to pick three three more cards, see if we can get a major arcana. We have the Queen of Pentacles, another queen. That's good. So we have you're in charge of your spirit. You're in charge of your money. And the Princess of Wands, messages coming messages you're going to hear something and healing and balance so this really does feel good now the the devil card uh coming up first can also be an addiction and you don't know how to get help for it now an addiction can be an addiction to anything it could be an addiction to your phone it could be an addiction to food drugs alcohol relationship anything that you you go to when you're feeling when you're trying to get out of pain right you you will go to that addiction generally um and so if that's the case the um, the temperance card at the end of this reading says that that there's a potential for great healing at this time so that's a lot of major arcana. The majority of cards were major arcana in this. Let's let's look underneath it. We have the Ten of Pentacles, uh, which is uh, sort of family money, uh, like a dynasty, dynasty family money. The Eight of Pentacles, which is working really, really hard. And then the Ten of Swords, which means there's something coming to an end. And you can see behind there, the, the sun is rising. So this can be the end of a way of thinking. Maybe there's a little bit of a poverty consciousness here and you feel like you need to continuously be working, 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 working. Otherwise, you're, you know, you're, you're kind of chained to, you're chained to money, not because money is more important than anything else, but I feel like there's a struggle with, allowing things to manifest it's like you have to have control over it and sometimes it's best to just let go and let god and creative and wonderful as you are you don't always have the you don't always have the full picture and it takes a lot of faith in order to sort of move in that direction so it's, it's not the easiest thing but um the the cards aren't <coughs> excuse me well, the card is pretty good. Excuse me. Ugh. I did warn you. I'm like, I'm like totally one, one down, one down. <laughs> one of the cards fell on the floor. Seven of seven of cups. Confusion. Confusion's out of here. All right. Let's pick a um, star seed oracle card. For Leo. Okay. Here we go. All right. So, in honor of Aquarius, now, of course, once Pluto goes into Aquarius, it's going to be opposing any of your Leo planets. When Pluto makes an opposition to any of your planets, um, <clears throat> it is a it's it's a test to see how truly strong you are. Okay. Inner Earth, you'll survive this new solutions and beginnings. 
this is an important important month for you, Leo. I will hold it up as soon as I find it in the book. Inner Earth. <clears throat> it's it's a beautiful card. Let's see if we can focus on it here. My last, my last reading, I couldn't get a focus on it. Yeah, see, it's hard. It's the lighting. Oh, there we go. Maybe you can put it just a little closer. There we go. Okay. Inner Earth, also known as Agartha, is believed to be a hidden subterranean world within the planet itself. Many ancient cultures mention it in their stories. It is said that some of the beings of ancient lost lands, such as Lemuria, Atlantis, and Ayavarta went there. Hindu and Celtic lore mention caves and entrances into underground worlds. Tibetan Buddhism refers to the secret mystical city of Shambhala, which is thought to be located in the Himalayas. Many have searched for inner earth and the physical in the physical world, but without success. So the mystery continues. It is a place that exists in the physical. <clears throat> Is it a place that exists in the physical or another level of consciousness? Question. There are solutions beyond what you can perceive. Surprise outcomes to your problems and situations, resolutions that are in the best interest of all involved. If you find yourself facing an obstacle or feeling stuck, the devil card, first card up, feeling stuck, and have no idea what to do, you're being reassured that there is a way out. You'll survive this and it will work out. If you're stuck in a rut, do something to shake up the energy and shift your thinking. Try something you wouldn't normally do. Soon you'll see a whole new world of solutions are available. Things that were previously beyond your focus will present themselves. Helpful people, signs from the universe, and support in both expected and unexpected ways are on their way to you. But first you need to do something different to shift your focus so you can receive them. Sounds familiar, yeah? Okay, well, I hope you find this helpful as we start 2024. Um, <clears throat> please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, <clears throat> you can share this video with another Leo that might benefit from it. You can support me that way, or you can actually support me with Patreon, I have a Patreon channel. The Patreon folk get things first, so they will get this first. They get they get all the taroscopes first, and I do have some special things on Patreon that only the Patreon people can see. So um, if you're interested in that, there's a link below for that as well. Otherwise, I will see you again next month for your taroscope for February or every morning as I either walk through my garden or if it's too cold and too inclement, I will uh, do something in the house. Usually it involves a cat or a bird or a vignette uh, that my, my creative husband has created in the house. So um, <clears throat> you can check that out. All right, guys, take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful month. Much love. Namaste. You can do it.